All right, guys, glad to have you on board again today. This is Wednesday, and we're going to do a quick update on the flow sequence because I've seen some inconsistencies uh, in the strategy application here and there, and I just wanted to uh, profit from the occasion to uh, remind some of the core principles to everyone there. So let's get it an update. So basically, where we are now is that in terms of S&P 500, uh, for those who haven't seen the previous ones, basically we're in the third flow in here, which is the final one of a sequence of three flow. Remember. When we had three flows to one direction we don't want to extend further down the line so we had the first flow here second was there and the third one is in here and that's the last one in our sequence so we don't trade any further than that we're going to let two consecutive bearish flows now to consolidate the pattern before we eventually consider starting again with another set of three flows all right so that means whenever it comes to whether you want to be bullish on the S&P 500 or not, the answer is now not. There is no way for you to be bullish in the S&P 500 following the flow sequence patterns, all right? We terminated this. The third flow always terminates and has to terminate with a third range boundary. And that's exactly uh, the confusion that I've seen today. Though this third range boundary is going to come here in the following days or whatever. Uh, it's going to come and we're going to do this. That means we're going to go back back to the resistant context and what's going to come out of this is unpredictable because the thing is that for those who have traded this third floor all along and have let the ride go on for as long as it ended up being very long and painful for those who tried to trade against it by the way but that's really the way to go we're going to go for the third range boundary that means it's a mandatory profit taking for those who've been trading this flow this is where you get out jump off the boat so this is really how it goes don't extend any further than that now the question arises for those who are wondering whether that's a good selling opportunity for the S&P 500 and this is where I would differ with my answer to say I am no longer bullish on the S&P doesn't mean I am bearish anyway it just says that in order to have a bearish thing to do here that would be selling a third range boundary which is definitely doable if and only if the actual prezi manual wasn't telling you to do not do it okay if you look at it the prezi manual so this is the french version never mind me but you'll have the same one in english you're going to go into range territory this is third range boundary because we've been preceded by a trend or a flow and basically in here you're going to have to validate some rules like basically the context needs to be reversed this is exactly what we have but you need to have no squeezes on the price and certainly not squeezes on the prices on the higher time frame as well which is exactly what we just told about the daily chart has squeezed the price so you don't want to trade these third range boundaries you really want to be staying away from them that doesn't mean it won't react and this is the confusion that I saw that means it is still the third range boundary for those who need to profit take from the flow you need to get the head out of here but for those who are willing to expand on the other direction and try to short sell the third range boundary the answer is is a big no-no the actual manual itself tells you not to do it it tells you there is a uh, there is a squeeze on the higher time frame so you'd rather like to stop and try trading this one so that's really how it is I don't think this third range boundary should be traded I think it should be just left for the market to deal with it and not you to try to profit from it unless you are taking profits from the flow what could happen out of this is means well this is a significant chance that you take your profits and two things are going to come out of it the third range boundary is going to be confirmed validated and confirmed is going back to the support context to create somewhat of a range and we're going to be able to dumb trade this range by the way but certainly not flow sequence application okay so that's really how it goes we're going to have a range and we're going to have to be able to dumb trade it the second thing that can happen is you can potentially get to squeeze this third range boundary. I mean, going back to all time highs and trading it at somewhat of the V shape reverse and just totally squeezing our way out of this. That still means if you were trading this third flow, you need to get ahead out of here. That's the rule you need to follow. It also means, well, you need to accept and embrace uncertainty in the markets. You're never going to buy at the lows and sell at the highs. If the market goes and extend higher, that means the third flow keeps going and you will not be part of it. That's not a big deal. You've taken quite a nice gain so far. So just embrace it and move on to next trade. Just always remember one thing. No one predicts the markets. No one buys lows and sells exactly at the top. It's really not that game. But if you follow the rule sets you have consistently over time, this is how you turn to a profitable trade. You're not just gambling anymore. You are doing consistent application of a rule set. 
So that's what it is. If you were flow trading, apply the flow trading rules. If you are not, then for now on, you're going to eventually have the opportunity to dumb trade, but you would like to wait for a little while. Okay, remember that if you want to do those trading things, you need to get the head out of squeezes on the higher time frame. Okay, you can definitely dumb trade. Okay, remember, dumb trade doesn't require you to get out of a squeeze, but the third inch boundary do so. So I would recommend not doing anything and just assess the fact that this is how it goes. If you really want to be trading this uh, uh, range, I would recommend going for a dumb trade. So you put your fibs, you put the blindfolds on, you go stupid, and you try to think like an 80 QE, uh, Q, uh, IQ stuff. Okay, so that's really how it goes. That means this is where you can put somewhat of a trade at 5200, kind of uh, uh, assess the signals, put your stop at the size of the trend channel, and just dumbly assess this trade. Okay, that's how it goes. If you want to do something bearish in the S&P, that's the only thing I would say is doable. And it also comes with risk taking, though you have to understand that. All right, so that's how it is. And I wanted to signal the differentiation between the two. I don't want you guys to try trading the third range boundary, specifically not inside the resistant context and so on. Okay, don't apply the third range boundary rule set. Basically in here, the Prezi manual tells you you can't do this. So if you do it still, that's your own business, but I'm not backing those kinds of trades. Dumb, no, dumb trades, yeah, potentially you could do those. Uh, uh, that doesn't really matter to me. All right. Uh, now, on the other things, remember, quick look at cryptocurrencies in here. Th those cryptos have long terminated their flows uh, as well, uh, which means, well, those have been terminated for Bitcoin in here. This is where you profit took and get out of here. And just a quick reminder, if you want to apply the flow sequence into crypto in the future, there's no way you can do it in the short term. It's really going to take a long, long ride. And it could be volatile, it could be the opposite of it. I shared you my kind of... Uh, um, expectation saying that I think there's going to get some more of a volatility reduction similar to Wyckoff accumulation or reaccumulation or distribution, whatever. We don't know the nature of this. Just don't try to overthink things too much. All you know in terms of flow sequence thinking is that in here we're only second flow, which means there's the third one to go by. And this third one isn't going to start unless we get to the Bollinger Band, the lower Bollinger Band this time around. So it's going to take quite some time to get there. And there's no way for you to predict. It could be done in a harsh volatile way and if bitcoin trades ever again at 30k in the following weeks yeah just jump on it on the other hand well we could just do nothing it could also just break the third range boundary and extend higher all of these possibilities only things you know is that there's only one you take advantage of is if we have the maximum volatility opportunity just jump on it otherwise wait and let the time play its game don't try to control time into flow sequences. And if we have to wade into the current area, kind of accumulating in a Wyckoff style stuff, then it's going to take quite a lot of time until we get some interesting things to talk about. OK, so the reason why I'm not necessarily recording weekly updates for these flow sequences and stuff, it's just because what now what we have in front of us just suggests a boring fucking summer is ahead of us. So you rather like to be playing with the cards you've been dealt with rather than trying to change the game all along. So that's really the number one takeaway this week. OK, the statements are what they are. Things are likely reaching an end rather than the beginning. And that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to have to take the reverse trade in here. It just means, well, we figured out a way out of this bull trades. The bull flows are terminated all across the board. And we rather like to be very cautious now with the bullish stance. That doesn't mean the bears will won the battle either. It's just we're going to have to let the market deal with itself without trying to trade it unless we do the stupid dumb trade strategies okay low risk stuff whatever put your fibs blindfolds on get stupid and don't try to uh, rationalize anything more than just fibs and standard deviations and that's all there is okay so that's uh, the, the point in here same thing goes for ethereum okay which gonna have to wait as well for its bollinger bands to be tested and in the meantime well put the goddamn fibs and try to trade dumb that means well simple dumb strategy in here is yeah, you figure out the resistance, you have the moving average inside the context, you're really due for a dumb trade, okay? So we've come out of a new low in here, which means you have eventually a, 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 a um, dumb pullback opportunity in here, but that requires you to get to reverse this context until we get uh, to, out of this. So that, that could take 
quite a lot of weeks until we get that for, for, for Ethereum. On the contrary, we have a nice selling trade in here at 37.33. This is where you can uh, blindly trade as a dumb trade in here on the bear side. Depending on the signals you have, you adjust the risk, of course. And for the bull trade, that would be making a new low and trading below the context again. That means there is a potential buying opportunity in here, somewhere in there, according to the signals, of course. If we go blindfold, if we go all the way down in here, triggering no types of signals that you could find them interesting, then just don't trade. That's really how it goes. I mean, that means there's a speculative area there. What you do with it depends on the technical signals that we're going to get out there, okay? So that's all there is. For now, if you want to buy, you need a new low on Ethereum. For example, if you want to sell, that's a 37-ish kind of area. And just replicate that for all the other asset classes. Dumb trade, and that's it. Remember, on the top of it, if you're doing dumb range trading and stuff like that, while also being a long-term investor, remember not to mix the two. It's two totally different things. And here, we do some real dumb stuff. We're not trying to figure out the future of these crypto assets in five to 10 years or somewhat like that, okay? So really try to figure out how to separate the two. And if you can't, if you're like somewhat of a crypto investor, just don't short-term trade if you can't separate the two correctly, okay? It needs and requires this specific mindset. If you do both, separate them, all right? Never mix things together. It's definitely not the same game here, all right? For those who kind of uh, are able to do it, or for those who don't long-term invest and just uh, blindly speculate well that's the one th that's the only thing we have to say right now ethereum offers a range in the four hour chart time frame and figure out all of the other assets that you might want to deal with remember that the most liquid the asset uh, uh, the higher market cap by the way uh, and uh, the better it is so don't try to apply this kind of strategy on meme coin shit coins or whatever it's just well to me this is casino like i said uh, this strategic uh, this strategy is working on uh, financial markets where there's sufficient liquidity and exchanges and trades being performed not just the kind of speculative ponzi schemes and stuff like that i mean ponzi's are ponzi they will go up and down it's just there's no way for you to time it so it's really all there is remember if you're using the strategy on pointless assets without nearly a bunch of value and not nearly even uh, uh, rational exchanges between buyers and sellers, well, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. It's none of my business. But that's really all there is to know. A quick look still at silver as well, because I've seen questions arising there. Remember the weekly chart reference for the flow sequence in here. Uh, don't be too harsh on yourself. Remember that we have reached the close validation, uh, confirmation, sorry, for these uh, flow sequence trade. Uh, just a quick reminder here uh while okay okay so we're currently in the process of doing this okay we'll be second flow in here the, quite there we had the third range boundary where if we bounce on the moving average or the bollinger band we're now waiting for this stage which is break the previous stop and that's the only catalyst that's going to afford us to get to stop at break even and until then well i've seen some people saying yeah okay we've done this no we didn't i said really breaking the previous high my, the previous high and we didn't so remember we need to break above 30 if you want to put your stops at break even. So don't preemptively apply the rules just because you want to free yourself from potential risks or whatever. Remember, stops need to be adjusted according to what the strategy tells you to do with them. Until then, if for whatever reason you say, okay, I just rather like to be at break even so I'll feel safer, well, that's the number one uh, kind of behavior that's gonna force the market maker to go down there, stop you out, and then go after you. So that's really the way to go, okay? You have a rule set, you might be very uncomfortable doing it, you still need to do it and that's just the way to go i'm not uh, uh, guaranteeing anything if you break the rules all the time okay so you know what the rules are certainly it might put a lot of pressure into your mind to just say okay i don't trust this guy i don't ask you to trust me like i said if you're using those strategies that got them hope you've been testing them yourself in replay mode before because if you are having doubts now with real money into trades that means you have crossed the line you have done something without testing it first and remember that's not how things need to be done all the trading lessons have been repeating this thing over and over again you try first you get the confidence and the level of confidence that is not just blindly following someone who said so but just taking on for yourself taking your dirty hands putting your hands in the dirt testing 
over replay functions on random assets, not just the one you want to trade. Go see for yourself that these things work only if you follow the rules. And once you're confident enough applying those rules, this is where you can start to put some money at stake. And that's only how this thing works, all right? If you're just trusting me here, that's not the way to go. See for yourself, test it as long as necessary. And once you have the sufficient level of confidence in yourself that those rules work, you can apply them. Now, you know those rules for what they are need to break the previous high point and going by the previous high point isn't breaking it. All right. So we need to get beyond that level. And only by that time, you will be able to put your stops at break even. Okay. And like I said, it might be uncomfortable to say we're getting closer and closer and closer. I'd like to put my stops at break even earlier. You should not. Okay. Which means for now on, all those who've been trading silver, uh, we still have probably traded in this area where the moving average was tested. Remember there and there all the speculative reasons we should have bought. And in this area, we would be putting stops at break even. Uh, we would have our stops somewhat around the size of the trend channel. So that means for those who've traded it in the 90 area, your stops should be somewhere around 14. For those who've traded in the 21, $22 area, or actually did both like I do, you have two different sets of stop losses. You've got one set of stop losses somewhere around 17 and the other one is around 15 or 14 and you must not put them at break even so uh, for now you need to wait whenever we break 30 and that doesn't mean whenever it just means i don't know it just means if and when we do i will put my stops at break even until then none of my business i let the market do whatever it is that it does which means chaos embrace chaos don't try to predict the future don't try to time the market don't try to be ahead of the market whatever that is just figure out a rule set and apply i know this can be very uncomfortable believe me i've went i've been there before so it's just if you're too uncomfortable holding some rule sets that means you probably went preemptively putting some money at stake without rough testing uh, enough so in that perspective well do some more research before putting money at stake. That's really all there is to know and figure out all the way around that there is no way for you to move the market where you want it to be, okay? It's going to do whatever it does and only when certain stuff happens, you should care. When nothing happens, you should just embrace waiting. There's no way you can get control over this. I know waiting on weekly timeframes can be very painful. Believe me, I am in this fucking silver trade for more than two years. So yes, time is definitely very painful sometimes, but you still need to apply the goddamn rules. So that's how it is. I would like to, to put my stops at break even and take my profits by the next week. But the reality is that I know that I have not a single bit of control over this and neither should you think of. Okay, that being said, I'm going to leave you guys with that. See you later. Bye-bye.